good day. Good day, everyone. How you doing? Welcome back to the Dr. Co Show. I am your host with the most, Dr. Daniel Pueblos. And today we have my good friend, Tony Castillo, registered dietitian, Tony Castillo. How you doing today, Tony? Danny, doing great. Excited to talk to you. Uh, excited to do this talk again because the first time didn't go well, but we learned from we can't just let defeat hit us, right? That's it's right. all right. And we have to be flexible, especially working with athletes that sometimes you have to pivot as this word, you know, especially with COVID. I'm sure we could take a shot every time you hear the word pivot. You couldn't even make it through <laughs> 10 minutes of like the news. But anyways, working with athletes, we have to be flexible. So things happen when we record things and this could be worse, but I'm very happy to be here um, and having this conversation with you again. Love it. Always a pleasure, my buddy. You know, it's uh, it's one of those. Yeah. If 2020 give us any like, just overall lesson is to be fluid. Yes. Like, you know, just to control what you can't control, right? And like like the, the great Bruce Lee once said, be water, my friend, right? So, I mean. Hey, you know. what better way to say it? Hydrate or dihydrate? <laughs> hydrate or dihydrate. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, you love my segue there, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll get into hydrate or dihydrate, my friend. So, um, so that was perfect. And that was not planned. That just came oh, no. out like just it, it, wow. It just came to me. It's just natural. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I tell, every time I drink water, man, I think about you. I mean, I don't know if that's weird or not, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, this is already gonna be ten times better for you guys listening and watching and like oh, it's already yeah. better right here. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into the, the thick of things, I just want to give you guys a, a good a background about Tony here. Um, so Tony was actually a fueling specialist for the University of Florida back in 2016. He went on to then being the fueling coordinator and assistant sports statistician with, with the Toronto Blue Jays baseball organization. And now he does virtual performance and sports. He's a, he's a virtual performance and sports statistician. Um, so if you're looking to gain some knowledge, gain some stuff for your own life, he's the guy. He is the guy <laughs> that I send people to. So if they have any questions about nutrition or anything else like that, Talk to my boy, Tony. He'll take care of you, right? <laughs> so we'll get into that at some point. But, yeah, so, again, Tony, I appreciate you coming back on. Um, you know, I know we've, we, we've talked a few times, and it's always a pleasure, man, because I know I gain a lot of value, and I know anyone else listening will gain value as well. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And I know when we did the first podcast, I don't even know how long ago that was, but I had people tell me, like, man, I love the podcast you did with uh, Dr. Danny. Uh, one of the guys we work with, uh, one of the hockey players, he told me, he's like, I, I listened to that podcast and I loved it. So knew we'd be the right fit working together, just hearing stuff like that. So thanks for having me on. And I appreciate it. And have, having to talk to me again about the same topics, probably for the third or fourth time now, Danny, <laughs> I appreciate your patience. And every time though, we keep, we add something new. So uh, that's, what and, you know, that's what we're here for. That's what it is. Because yeah. Hey, as we know, life is changing every single day. <laughs> right. So like even when yep. we talked about like uh, our very first conversation with me like a year ago or I don't know yeah. how long ago it's been, but things have changed since then, right? I mean, so and obviously the times have changed, right? Yeah. Like our first conversation, there was no freaking global pandemic going on. Right? <laughs> so like, you know, like if we were to go back in time and say, Hey, guess what, Tony? There's there's gonna be a global pandemic next year. You would have told me to go get a drug test, right? Yeah. So like, <laughs> I would have said you're dehydrated. Something's wrong with yeah. you, Dan. You're not get thinking. Get some water. Go, go, go hydrate because you're dehydrated right now, my yeah. no, so. <laughs> Um. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, especially in both of our worlds. Like, you're in the nutrition world. I'm in this in this sports psych world, performance. And there's a lot of crossover for sure. Absolutely. But, like, we see so much change, too. So, but before we get into it, like, just talk to me and let everyone else know about, like, why you decided to get into the field of nutrition. Absolutely, man. So throughout my whole life, <clears throat> I've had weight issues and body image issues. And the reason I know that is because even now I see my grandma and she says, you're either too skinny or you're too fat. <laughs> um, and knowing that I'm a dietitian, if she makes me food, she might make me some fried plantains with rice and beans and chicken. She's like, all right, you go make your veggies. Like yeah. she won't make veggies, but she will acknowledge that I eat them. Right. And she's like, go eat that rabbit food. So yeah. growing up um, with Hispanics, it's really big, not really to eat veggies. It's more like rice, beans and, and some sort of protein, ju just like it is in the American diet now. Yeah. So every time I go, I, it's always something about my body image was was brought up, right? Oh, you're the American that eats a lot of cornflakes for breakfast. I'm like, I don't even, 
flakes, but yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, so growing up and then in high school, I was bullied because of the way I looked. To be 100% honest, Doc, I had man boobs and, you know, people were going around giving each other the scoop and sure. it really did affect me, right? I hated that. Like I was yeah. very insecure about my body. And when I played high school football and I was a defensive lineman, so the big guys in the front, right? I'm not like a, a wide receiver, never had that kind of body. Same here, man. <laughs> yeah, right. And I was always like, I didn't want to go shower with yeah. the boys because I didn't want people to pick on me because of my body. Sure. And even trying to go to the beach, I was scared. Like I'd be the guy in the pool or at the pool party with my friends or going to the beach wearing a shirt and I didn't like it. So eventually in high school, um, I found the friend of mine who was a bodybuilder and he's like, here's this meal plan. And I'm like, awesome. So I tried the meal plan, started working out for the first time, right? And in football, they had you do workouts. So that was my first exposure, but like actually strength training. And I felt a lot more confident. I lost weight. I love what I was doing. Learning what squatting was made me feel powerful. Then I went to college and I went from worrying about what I was looking like to what was my next class schedule. And also what was I going to be drinking next, right? It was like tailgating on Saturdays. I was someone who was binge drinking. I gained the weight back, man. And I did every diet under the sun to lose it because I couldn't find that meal plan that I had in high school. Sure. And that meal plan, I remember it like night and day. It was like, you have to count out the amount of goldfish, count out the amount of Triscuits. And it was just like, why am I eating this way? Right? Like what, why was this making me happy? And it didn't. So then in college, I gained all the weight back. I was drinking a lot. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to do low carb diet. Did it work? Did Atkins? Did it work? I was in school in Miami, did the South beach diet. I, you know, all these diets, I say they don't work, but I mean, they work because I lost the weight, but then I regained it back. Yeah. Eventually I got my fitness pal. This is when my fitness pal was first starting. I started tracking calories like crazy. And then I started to include clean eating and I lost the weight, Danny. I felt great. Everything was going well. I didn't understand it. I was like, what is my fitness pal really telling me? I don't know. And then I tried my, if it fits your macros, I gained my weight back. So then I went back to counting calories and with the binge drinking and low calorie intake, I actually broke my foot. Wow. And that showed me that being active requires you to have a good caloric intake. And sometimes it's not all, it's not all about weight loss. It should be about performance. Sure. So I got my degree in biology and chemistry and I was like, all right, I'm going to take a year off. I thought I was going to go to med school. I went to an open house with my wife and they had a master's in nutrition. I was like, nutrition, you can get a degree in this. I didn't know that. Right. Like I just thought it was at the time, Instagram wasn't popping, but I thought you could just be a personal trainer. And when you're a personal trainer, you just give out meal plans. Right. I thought that's what this was all about. Yeah. So I went and sat for my first nutrition class and I absolutely loved it. I was like, this is for me. This is where I want to be at. So I learned all the biochemistry that happens within our bodies, how to translate it did my internship down in Miami. Then I went to go work at the University of Florida. And the reason I love working with athletes is because a lot of them, they want to look like underwear models, but I give them this. Do you want to look like an underwear model or win a world series? They're like, well, I want to perform at my best. And I'm like, well, then sometimes that means you don't look like an underwear model because you could actually injure yourself because you don't have enough body fat to take a baseball because if baseball's coming at you and it hits you, you break a bone, you're going on the DL for a while. You're not going to be playing if you don't have enough adipose tissue or fat tissue right and then our, our client that we both worked with he's a hockey player it's like you need to have some adipose tissue to take hits so have some fat okay. on you so i love that athletes fuel to perform they take eating on how they can better the performance and it helped have a mind shift in my head because i i stopped looking as food as a place of comfort or a place of like i need to lose weight how can i eat to perform the activities i'm doing and I saw that shift with athletes and then working with pro athletes and working with athletes that are achieving that or wanting to get to that next level. I love working with them because if I'm able to help them understand that being hydrated, having more fruits and vegetables, having lean proteins, having more whole grains, help them achieve better success. And they have a following of a million people. Like we were talking about with the rock, right? Like if you could get someone like that to preach those things, then I've helped over a million people in the world. And that's really like the big thing, like making that message go out. So one day our platforms will be bigger, Doc. All right. But at the <laughs> moment we don't have it. So if our athletes can preach for us what we teach them, 
how much better is this world that we're leaving it in than what we came into? And that's really my passion working with active individuals because people typically tend to listen to those active individuals. People tend to listen to those athletes. So what can I impart on them? That food is fuel and eat with purpose and on purpose. Absolutely. And that's, that's a great story. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It, it, it's so funny. You, you bring up, you said it was your grandma. Who yeah. Was, yeah. Like my grandma was the same way, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my, my grandma is from Mexico and, you know, it's just, I, I remember every time, and even to this day, like, I'll go over there, always trying to feed me. Like, yep. like Grandma, no, I just ate. No, 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 eat something, eat something. <laughs> and, like, I remember one time, like, uh, about six, seven years ago, I lost a bunch of weight. You know, I was doing yoga, so I wasn't doing, like, too much, like, weight training like I'm like mm -hmm. now, but, um, so I simmed down a lot, you know. And every time I would call my grandma, she's like, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? Yeah. I'm like, no, grandma, I'm like, I'm eating. I'm eating. I'm just, it, well, I'm just cleaning my diet and I'm, I'm working out a lot and all that stuff. It's like, no, eat something. You know, eat a tamale, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like eat something. You're like, I'm good. I'm, I'm, yeah. If I'm hungry, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll eat it. It's not that I'm against tamales. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, and, and that's a whole other culture thing too, right? I mean, yeah. I'm sure you probably come across people who come from certain cultures, like even like the Mex I know the, like from my ass, from my point of view, the Mexican culture, you know, like a, a chubby baby is a healthy baby. <laughs> yeah. It just, it just, and I'm sure I thought the only one in the culture that thinks that, you know? And so that's why like anytime I lose weight, my grandma think I'm sick, you know, I'm like, Oh, I'm just, I'm watching what I'm eating. Grandma. I'm, I'm trying to lose weight, you know? And so yep. um, it's just funny how that works. Right. And so, absolutely. And, you know, so like, what are some like, I know, you know, culture might be a thing because you might have, you, I'm sure you probably come across people where, you know, you're, you're, you're advising them or you're telling you're educating them on certain things and they might think, oh, I don't know about that because I was raised to believe this. Right. So like, have you, have you come across any, anything like that or other challenges like from your experiences? Oh yeah. So when it comes to culture, that's something we definitely have to take into, into consideration. When I was working with the Jays, luckily that both my parents are Dominican. As you know, a lot of baseball players are Dominican, yeah. but there's also Venezuelans, there's Mexicans. So I got to learn their foods that they enjoy. And sure. one of the greatest things I got to experience was working with these different cultures and bringing foods that they loved because other dietitians that worked with them told them they couldn't eat white rice because that was going to affect their performance. And in the, at least Dominican culture, white rice is huge. And then working with some Mexicans, they're like, we never have tacos here. And I'm like, okay, well, let's get you tacos. And, and they said to me, not the Taco Bell tacos, Tony. I want some real yeah. corn tortillas. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I will do my best to bring it to you. You know what's so funny? I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I remember seeing an article recently that I think it was somewhere like in the Northeast where they're like, uh, you know, number one Mexican restaurant. It was a freaking Taco Bell. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Like, you know, like you, you, you talked to, you know, uh, Jake and, you know, those guys. Um, yeah. Like, I'm telling like, you guys got to come to Cali, man, or come like, come over here, you know, because I know for sure, I know some good places, you get some good tacos, not some Taco Bell tacos, right? Exactly. So trust me, I don't mind some Taco Bell once in a while, right? But yeah. if you want some good tacos, I know some places, right? I'm like, no, put that stuff away. Exactly. <laughs> and food is ingrained in our culture. And then like, even like Venezuela, oh, yeah. they're like, oh, I want an arepa. And I... I hadn't known what that was. So I asked them to educate me on it. Yeah. What was their culture? So I went to a player's room once and they taught me like, here's what we love to eat. We've never had these. And I was able to bring these to the complex and it. And a lot of people are like, Oh, but those are comfort foods. Shouldn't they stay away from that when they're playing? No, it's going to help them perform better because mentally it helps them feel at ease. It helps them break what we consider good. And a lot of the American players were like, I've never had this food. They were open to trying it. At least the ones that were good teammates, those that weren't yeah. open, I mean, they probably didn't last that long in the system. And I can, I can assure <laughs> yeah. that because a lot of guys just want to integrate with each other, right? Like if you make sure. a good team, you understand each other. And if someone has a different food that they like, you help bring it in, right? Those are the people that typically succeed and become elite athletes. So understanding these different cultures and how food is brought into it, even with the guys that come in, I mean, let's talk about like donuts, pizzas, hamburgers, all the foods that we always hear junk food, right? Like we shouldn't have that fried chicken. It's all looked down upon. However, we made it so that we had those food included because we knew that if we didn't include it, they'd find a way to get it anyways. So what do I mean by that? We found ways to get pizza, but we'd have it when they, we knew they had an off day the next day. So their body could recover from having some of those pro-inflammatory foods, right? 
and one of the things we discuss in the education program is premium versus regular carbs. And we've discussed this before. So if we got a Lamborghini, we put that premium gas in it. And what happens when we put regular gas in it, it doesn't run as well. Toyota Corolla, nothing wrong with Corollas. I own a Toyota Corolla. So I always like to tell people that and start with that. You put the, <laughs> the, the regular gas in, but when you put premium gas in, it runs better. So my goal for every athlete I work with, I treat them like, like a Lamborghini. I'm like, how can we get you to have more premium fuel? And that's what we look at and try to distinguish between premium and regular and not between healthy or unhealthy or good food and junk food, because that's just not how food should be viewed. It should be, how are we performing, right? When can we include these foods that we consider more regular fuel to maximize their performance? And that's what I like to educate my players on, because at the end of the day, if you negate someone the food, they're going to want it more. And they're going to do it either behind my back and not tell me, as opposed for me to show up and bring it. You don't know how many times when I brought foods, we did burgers and people are like, oh, look at me eating a burger. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get a burger too. They're like, you eat burgers? <laughs> he doesn't. I'm like, yeah, man. And I love it. And yeah. like, Whoa. like they were just so thrown off. And it's, it's crazy for people to think that like as a dietitian, I eat those things and I promote it. And the reason I do is because they're going to do it anyways. And even those top guys who, you, who we think don't eat those things, they do. They just don't show you. Yeah. Yeah. And also something that I've learned from you, man, is that like, it's okay to have a burger once in a while, right? Oh, yeah. It's okay to have carbs. It's, you know, oh, yeah. especially, especially since like, I, I try to keep myself active. I'm on my, my Peloton bike, like five, five, six days a week. And, and some of these workouts are intense, you know? Yeah. And so, and I know, I've noticed that since, since I've been like allowing myself to eat certain foods and even like if I eat the junk food, I don't eat a lot of it. Like I know I, I'm watching your stuff, man. I love it. You, you put out so much good content and thanks, man. We'll talk about where to find them later on. <laughs> I appreciate you. Guy. Hey, puts a lot of good content out. Um, yeah. You know, even for myself, I've gained a lot of value from just listening to you. And, um, and that's why I, I sent people your way because I, I truly thanks, value man. what you, what you bring and vice because, versa. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, once I once I started to just allow myself to like eat a burger, or eat eat a couple pieces of pizza, and like eat carbs because I knew I'm gonna have a hard workout, you know, today or tomorrow. Like I, I've been able to sustain myself during those workouts, even like my energy is picked up, you know. So it's definitely I could attest to what he's talking about right now. Danny, I was that guy too, man. I used to yeah. be scared of carbs. I'm like, if I eat carbs, I'm gonna blow up. If yeah. I eat pizza, I'm going to blow up. And then I used to do the cheat days. Well, I used to be cheat meal. <laughs> then it became a cheat day. Then it became a cheat week weekend. And yeah. then especially now during the holiday season, man, I wouldn't follow a diet ever. I would <laughs> start and, January 1st. Yeah, know? exactly. I used to be that guy. Yeah. And I never yeah. understood because I was restricting so much. And you could talk about this more because of the mental aspect. But yeah. what I teach my clients is the more you restrict it, the higher chance you have of binging it. When you yeah. just allow yourself to have it, this week I had a client, one of his goals is to literally have chocolate every day. And he's like, what, why I'm trying to break sugar. I have an addiction. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, let's talk about what your real challenge is. It's because you're restricting yourself when you think that's, what's going to help you get the body composition you want. Yeah. However, when you allow it in your diet, it no longer becomes a thing that's stopping you. It's actually the thing that's going to propel you. And with carbs, man, you don't know how many athletes I work with that are like, no, no, I got to do low carb. And I'm like, you're telling me you're trying to drive a Lamborghini with oil instead of gas they're like what what do you mean i'm like well you're not giving it enough gas you're trying to run a lamborghini at top performance with the gas light on every time and you have to keep pulling over like that's not going to work so understanding that carbs are what we need even as you and i as active individuals is something that should be included in diets because if not you're running on low and when your car is running on low you're always worried about where's the next gas station I, it's not working as well it's not 100 percent, as opposed to a, a car full of gas yeah yeah, and that's always a good comparison, a good uh, analogy that I like to I like to hear you use because it's so true. Like if I'm doing, you know, because some of these workouts I'm doing, I'm, I'm on the Peloton bike and I'm doing also strength training, right? Mm -hmm. And so like that extra oomph of whatever I'm eating might help me get through that. Like, all right, like instead of me quitting after a, a, the, bike, the bike ride or me quitting after like a certain amount of minutes, I'm, I'm, it allows myself to like push through it, right? And there's that component and the mental component. Like that's where we cross paths, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. I, that fuel that our body's getting in addition to our mental capacity, like 
there, there's a lot of connections that people don't generally realize that are going on, you know, that help people perform, especially when you have elite athletes, you know? So, you know, and that's why it's so important for people to like, to recognize those differences, right? Educate themselves and to also know who they should be listening to, right? Because <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, especially in this world of, of fake news, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where there's so, there's so much like stuff on social media, you have stuff on YouTube, people are, you know, and it's like, we don't know who to listen to. And people are, are saying, oh, this and that, you know, this, do this diet because that actress or actor is doing this diet, all that, you know. So, like, what would you say, like, as far as knowing the importance of the registered dietitian versus some, like, fit person to see on IG or, you know, somebody they see at the gym? Like, how would you, like, how, like, discuss the importance of knowing the difference? I mean, Danny, I fell in that trap myself. I followed someone and I thought the meal plan's all I needed, right? And the big difference is that when you work with someone who doesn't understand how your body works, it could actually damage you even more. And that's something I learned the hard way. Even using my fitness pal, it's a great tool for awareness. But if that's the only tool you have, you're not getting true feedback. You're not understanding how the, the food you're eating is affecting your body. You're just inputting calories in, calories out. And you're not understanding what else is going on in your body. You don't know how many athletes I've worked with I found just using my fitness pal and they've been under eating. They've been under fueling. They found a coach through online who's never worked with an athlete and they say they're a sports nutritionist because a dietitian versus nutritionist. Dietitian has to go to school has to get at least a bachelor's and by 2022, at least a master's, they need to do 1200 hours minimum of an internship. And that's unpaid. And I can tell you, I worked a job at that time and a, the internships working like a 40 hour week. So I was working 80 hours a week. I was working from seven till about three and then from four till about midnight for mm -hmm. 1200 hours, which it took a whole, I think nine months for me. And I was working two jobs, man. And I struggled. I mean, I gained weight because when you have low sleep, but anyways, that's what a dietitian and nutritionist is. You could li and this has happened. You could literally get your dog to be a nutritionist. You just have to sign them up and they can be a nutritionist. So <laughs> the difference between a dietitian and nutritionist, dietitian goes to school for it. A nutritionist, anyone can call themselves that. And people that do these weekend programs and they come and say, oh, I'm a sports nutritionist. Like, I'm sorry, you're not. They, most of these people don't even work with athletes and they don't understand what fueling an athlete is actually like. And when these athletes come to me, they're underfueled, uneducated, and typically their performance is down the drain. So they're going to get injured. And then they come to me like, oh, I have my, my guy or my girl that helps me with nutrition. I'm like, well, if you want to listen to them, you absolutely can. I'm not going to stop you from it. But look at all these people like you, you just got injured. So do they really have your best interest in mind? And they, do they know how to fuel an athlete? Like I've worked personally with a lot of personal trainers to help them in their diets. And they use what I've taught them with their clients. And that doesn't bother me. I want to help people. If they take my material, repurpose it and use it for someone else, may the universe, God, whoever you believe in, bless them. <laughs> because I just want to educate people so they can educate others the correct way. Not putting them on another meal plan, on another calorie deficit for no reason when they don't understand that an athlete needs to perform, they don't always need to lose weight. Yeah, and that's so important too because, I mean, now more than ever, I'm, I, even like in high school, you're seeing more of these high school teams and athletes working with someone like you, whereas like when I was in high school, I didn't have that. Like we had our coach on this stuff, you know, like – yeah. And so it, it just goes into like how competitive things are now compared to before, you know, and even like you see these athletes at the elite levels um, and you have these athletes like Tom Brady, LeBron James, who, who are like up there in their age. And like, as you get older, you recognize how important it is to take care of this stuff. Right. Because most people, when they're young, they don't care. Like, they, they play, you know, they get, they, they, they get hit and they, they pop right back up, you know, like when you're like 18, 19, right. And all of a sudden here comes your thirties and all of a sudden you hit, get hit. Like it takes a little bit longer to get back up if you do. Right. <laughs> and so that's why I, 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 I preach this to like my students, my athletes, they don't want the younger ones, especially like take care of your bodies now because your future selves will thank you. 
right? Like I'm a testament to that. Like I wish my coaches, like I wish, you know, and it's probably they just didn't know. But yeah. like, you know, certain techniques like weightlifting or like you know, nutrition, like nutrition, and all this stuff that like I'm feeling now because like you know my knees are you know like a typical person my age. I have like 80, 80 year old knees, <laughs> but you know it just it just it just comes with the territory of playing sports and like, I play football. I was I was eleven too, so I went through yeah. the whole grinder and um, but like you know and that's why I t- try to tell people like take like, nip this in the bud now, okay? And especially like with the basketball team I coach with OCC like. We, we always tell them how important it is to to um, to take care of your body, like fuel appropriately, and also hydrate. Or yeah, hydrate. <laughs> right? absolutely. Hydrate or dehydrate. You already know. I mean, a great <laughs> quote, uh, quote from Ray Lewis, Hall of Famer, going to be Hall of Famer, linebacker that played with the Ravens forever, was nutrition can make a good athlete great or can make a great athlete good. And you know how many athletes I've worked with that think they know nutrition and they're always on the DL. They're always on the IR because they don't want to work with a true dietitian. They tend to work with someone who they think is helping them and it's actually hurting them. And then they follow this poor diet where they have a lot of regular fuel instead of premium fuel. And they, they, they're always injured. And I try to educate and I try to show them, but sometimes they, they don't want to hear it. But when they get older, they figure out, man, I should have listened. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, that we hope um, that the people that listen to us, um, that they take our advice and at least suggestions and just uh, say, hey, be aware of this, right? Like, just be aware of how this can impact you, your performance, because you know, we, I, I know we both don't want to see our, our, our people, our athletes, whoever we work with, um, I go down the wrong path, end up regretting it and having to start all the way back, you know? And so, and, and in this world of all this information, it's important to know that stuff. It's important to know where we're getting our information, understanding what an empirical study is, right? Mm. Compared to something we see on TMZ, yeah. you know, knowing <laughs> the difference between the two, right? Because yeah. you know, knowing the research protocols, you know, like with this whole vaccine stuff coming out, it's important to know the difference between like, yeah the you know knowing what's the science what's the research and knowing that protocol versus a conspiracy that you might have heard on youtube like you know it's just <laughs> and like and we have to get back to i see so many people go away from science and believe in conspiracy and like we have to get back to objective science and research trusting that the right sources like a registered dietitian for instance versus a, a gym rat who looks good who has a six-pack you know yeah you know, they might, you know they might know what's what works for them right yeah. Uh, they might not know because everyone is different as, as we both know, like when I work with my clients, I, I approach them each independently. I don't treat them all the same way. Uh, as far as like, because what might work for one person, just as it in your field might not work for someone else. Absolutely. And that's why I tell my people, whether it's my clients, even the, my mentees I work with, I tell them go in with an open mind when working with a client and, and don't have a, a, a cookie cutter way of helping people because it's not how it works. And if you try that way, if you, if you take the same approach for every single person, you're not going to last very long, right? Absolutely, yeah. No, they're going to find someone who wants to help them with a customized plan and a customized way of helping them because, you know, that's that's the best way to go about it. That's right, brother. <laughs> and like, especially you know, especially with how um, you know you see these diets and you see how people they're so focused on nutrition, which is good. But that's not the end game. That's not the whole picture. Not too many people are focusing on the hydrate part, which I know you are, right? <laughs> yeah, Talk to man. me about your, your your phrase, hydrate or dehydrate. Oh man, so it's it's as you know, I've even done some videos on Instagram, which we'll talk about afterward. Uh, Captain Hydrate, but I'm huge on hydration, man. I love hydration because it's such a low hanging fruit that a lot of athletes miss on. Yeah. And what do I mean by miss on? Well dehydration can in or dehydration can make your performance go down by seven to ten percent ten percent is huge like yeah. for me or even you like if you are performing at 90 percent or at 100 percent, your team's probably going to win or if you do an individual sport you're going to do better if you're at 100 percent than if you're at 90 percent. and if your sure. competition's at 90 and you're at 100 you have a better probability of winning so number one 10% is huge. So I always like to come out with that with athletes. 
Second thing is it affects your hunger, your thirst, your headaches. You could get nausea. You could get a heat stroke. So these are all things that are related to being dehydrated. You know how many athletes I've worked with where we just start with hydration protocols and it helps their performance tremendously. They always want to know what the best supplement is, but I tell them, if you don't have a good basis of hydration of your fuel, supplements aren't going to do anything. So going to hydrate or dehydrate, this was years ago. I went to a buddy's wedding in Texas, woke up the next day, went to brunch, and me and a couple friends, as, as you know, I was hydrating. I asked for the waitress to bring water for the table. And everyone's like, oh my God, of course you would. And the waitress <laughs> comes up and she's like, hydrate or dehydrate. I'm like, excuse me? And someone that was at the table was like, did you hire her to say that? And I was like, no, but I, I love it. I was like, can I use it? She's like, absolutely. So I've just taken it from that point on. I wish I could tell you I created it, but I took it and I've just been using it because I absolutely love it. It just goes together. And it's really like, do you want to perform at your best or do you want to perform, you know, as like second string, dihydrate? And it just really stuck. And I know that it's so easy for people to implement, to do better. And when people get quick results, they, they tend to believe you better. So I always like to get people feeling better, having more energy, because sometimes we have low energy because we're not hydrated enough. Sometimes we have headaches all day because we're not hydrated enough. We're not performing at our best because we're not hydrated enough. We may be cramping because we're not hydrated enough. So if I can get someone to get a quick win where they have better energy, less headaches, more um, or less cramping, man, I mean, come on, that's easy buy-in right there. So that's typically where I start with most of my clients. And it's just getting a hydration protocol. And there's three things you can do to monitor your hydration. It's the what method. Weight, where you weigh yourself before and after training. For every pound you lose, you need to rehydrate with 16 to 24 ounces, depending on your personal, you know, how much you weigh before and after. And I, I tell people to do it close to naked, possibly before and after. And if you're someone who's a salty sweater, so we're both wearing black shirts and you might've seen this on yourself, but you get that white line on the ball cap or the white line on your black shirt. That's typically salt. And I get that. And I even see people with salt crystals on their face. That means you need to include some sort of electrolyte beverage, depending on the sport and activity you do. So weight is the first thing. Next thing is urine, which I got these things. So I was given a presentation to a group of fifth graders and I wanted to make it fun and interesting. So I show them these little bottles I have. And I'm like, here's my pee. <laughs> and all these kids were like, ew, that's gross. I'm like, I'm kidding. It's not. I want to get that chat, man. It comes out like that. The one. <laughs> yeah. I really had to dihydrate for this one right here. Yeah. No. So like I just have water, lemonade, apple juice. And this is, um, I think like a diet soda or something. So you always want to be light, like lemonade. So your urine, we want it light, like lemonade. We don't want it clear. We don't want it like apple juice and we don't want it like diet Coke or Guinness beers. I like to say, and the reason we don't want it clear I had a player who was getting full body cramps all the time and we we're trying to figure out why. So his urine was clear. We did a urine specific gravity test. So we measured the contents in his urine and it was so low. We asked him like, did you put water in here? He's like, no, this is my pee. So he actually needed more electrolytes. Once we added electrolytes to him, he actually started to get more lemonade color urine and he stopped the full body cramps. So he was actually over hydrating. He wasn't getting enough oh, wow. sodium and potassium or electrolytes. The other end of the spectrum, someone had pee like this. And this player was like, Tony, Tony, come look in the urinal. And I'm like, great. I got a master's degree. I've been working with athletes and I get to look in a urinal. Here it is. Here's the day, baby. I was called into action. That's what you've been waiting for your whole life. That's what you've been working for is your, your educational career, right? Absolutely. So talk about being humbled. And I'm like, I don't want to go look at the urinal. He's like, no, no, you're going to be super proud of me. And I'm like, okay. So I go and it came out like this, Danny. I was like, you're kidding, right? Like you poured something in here. You're joking with me. He's like, no, this is my actual pee. I'm like, what'd you do yesterday? This was a pitcher. And he decided to play golf the day before, do rounds of fireball with his boys, mm. have Miller lights like crazy, just pounding beers. And I was like, you know, you're pitching in like an hour, right? Because he hadn't peed all day up, up until that point. That's how dehydrated he was. Wow. So I try to give him water. I try to give him electrolytes just to get him ready. He didn't last an inning, Doc. He literally gave up 10 runs in the first inning because he had headache, he had nausea, and he cramped while he was on the mound. Even though we're trying to hydrate him, he, we just couldn't, we didn't have enough time and we didn't know. And I can tell you from that point on, he never showed up on the field with something like this. Yeah. So always remember we want like, like lemonade. So we have weight, urine, and thirst. Thirst is the last one because thirst is unreliable sometimes. Sometimes we confuse thirst and hunger because they're located in the same part of the brain. 
So we always want to make sure we're staying hydrated. So I typically like to use urine, just light like lemonade, because I think that's a better way of knowing than thirst. Because thirst, mm -hmm. again, even though Sprite had a commercial during our childhood that said, obey your thirst, Sprite <laughs> is definitely not something you yeah, want to hydrate Sprite. with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are three ways people can easily assess their hydration. And a take-home message, not only is 16 to 24 ounces for every pound you lose, but you should try to aim for half your body weight in fluids. And then for every pound you lose during training, another 16 to 24. So at least half your body weight in ounces if you're someone who's not active or just a very sedentary, then for every pound you lose during your physical activity, another 16 to 24. That's good to know. Um, and one question I did have, because I, th this had come up, and one, one of my I was a family member or a friend asked me about this, and I, and I wanted to bring it up today because you're the guy to ask about this. Um, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy here, but since we're on the topic, yeah. um, being that, you know, as of this recording, we are still in the middle of this pandemic, and mm -hmm. people, a lot more people are working from home. Um, I remember someone asking me or telling me that. You know, uh, she was drinking water a lot. And she, when she would go to work, she had her big bottle of water. And so she was hydrating. But she noticed that since she's been home, at, uh, you know, working from home, she wasn't drinking water like she did. So, like, how can, like, what suggestions would you give someone to help them stay on top of, like, hydrating throughout the day, especially when, like, they're working and they, they, maybe they, they just don't remember to hydrate for themselves? So, Doc, that's not the first person I've heard say that. I've had so many people that I've worked with during the pandemic. I think of all the minor league players that didn't get a season this year. Oh, They've yeah. been at home playing video games. Yeah. And a lot of athletes use that in their free time to take up time, right? Like a lot of them practice, a lot of them watch film, but then other times they play video games. So they sit there just lounging and they, they forget their hydration. And it's so, so important. And then in the work aspect, it's social. People get up, they go to the bathroom, they go to the water cooler, water cooler talk. Right. Yeah. But when they're at home, who are you water cool and talk with your significant other, maybe <laughs> your, your pet. No, yeah. you're not doing any of that. You're just get back to work, even with kids around. Right. So a couple things I love to do. Number one, have a water bottle that they can keep with them and put it right next to their desk. Right. Because if they see it, they'll be able to do it. I've, I have literally two, I mean, who would it, right? Hydrate or dehydrate water bottle right here. <laughs> you would, you would. I, I would, right. I love so, it. I love it. <laughs> to remind myself like dude you need to hydrate right so mm -hmm. i look at this i got two water bottles at my desk not only that i know a lot of people that like cold water so having that cold pitcher in the fridge so that yeah. you can keep it cold or if you have a fridge that already filters it having it ready to go if you're someone who struggles with just drinking water this isn't good for the environment so for people that are very environmentally conscious i apologize but to help people stay hydrated put maybe five bottles of water in the fridge if that's what your goal is and then you finish them off right so for example, I, I don't like to, I like to reuse water bottles. I'm big on reusable water bottles. So, but if it helps someone get hydrated, let's start with those five 16.9 ounce water bottles that they have that they can just reach to, right? Maybe the next day they refill those water bottles and put them back in the fridge. So one thing is to put a water bottle near you, put the water bottles in the fridge. The other thing is to put a, a reminder on, on your phone. You know how many people I've had put water reminders on their phone that helps them tremendously. The other thing is, Look at these bad boys. These were invented in who knows when. Post-it notes. <laughs> we're all working on our computers. Take yeah. a post-it note, put hydrate or dihydrate on it, plop <laughs> it right on your computer. You will always be looking at it. And it reminds you, oh, that's right. I need to drink water. It's a simple, very effective way of doing it. And finally, there's a ton of hydration apps out there that you can just download and it'll tell you like, hey, drink water. Or there's even now water bottles that light up or make noise every time you need to drink water. Wow. So the most effective and quickest way you can start doing it, just have a, a bottle of water, a cup of water that's specifically for water at your, at your workstation. Or if you're someone who plays video games, wherever you play video games or keep like a case of water next to you, right? If you're someone who wants to go more high end, put reminders on your phone, buy the, the better water bottle. But I just like to keep it simple. I ask them, what is a water bottle you typically use or that you used to use at work? Let's say it's this water bottle, bam, perfect. So I want you to have this next to you every day and fill it up every morning, right? And they put it at their desk and it's ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah. Here's an idea, Matt, and you're going to thank me for this because you're going you're to be a rich man after this. <laughs> uh, 
I'll cut you, you in. Get, I'll cut you in. <laughs> you got. Yeah. I want. I want royalties here. Okay. Yeah. Um. You got. You got to get a picture of you holding a, a water bar like this and make like a sticker out of it. People would just post and just seeing your pretty mug on their on their computer screen at all times. That's it. Hey, it's just, it's just like you judging them for not hydrating, right? You know how many people have told me that? They're like, I see signs all over the place about hydration. Or just, I just imagine you coming up like, you better hydrate. Yeah. That's so uh, awesome, man. But yeah, a lot of good advice, man. Because yeah, it's just, it's just in general, like people need to hydrate. And I know I've I had to be more mindful of my hydration as well, especially people working from home or athletes. Like you said, you know, a lot of the, the, uh, for instance, a lot of minor league baseball, a lot of our uh, clients with one vision, you know, they, they didn't they didn't have a season. And so yeah. it's especially important to not only hydrate, but also knowing like how to how to work with their diets. Right. And so like with everything that we, we that keeps coming out with new diets and old diets, like what are your thoughts on these diets, especially like the keto and like the plant based diet, all the stuff that's coming out now? Like what are your thoughts on all that stuff? How much time do we got? No. So <laughs> as we know, within like today. Okay. So. <laughs> so number, let's start with like keto. It's okay. low carb. There was a lot of studies that were trying to see if it helps with endurance athletes, because we know that fats have more calories per gram. So we would expect more energy. And what they found is that when they compared a low carb, high fat diet to a high carb, low fat diet, endurance athletes performed exactly the same. We're talking about endurance athletes. We're talking about like ultra marathoners, cyclists. We're not talking about baseball, football, hockey, basketball. It, we're not talking about those quick sports where you have quick movements. If anything, it will hinder your performance. So keto is not where you want to go if you are trying to be an active individual or an athlete, especially elite athlete. That's the first thing. Like it's, it's let's go back to fuel, right? If our car uses gas, why are you going to put in diesel? Your car's not going to work the same, right? Yeah. If your car is not a diesel car, it's not going to work the same. And what I always like to tell people, there's something called gluconeogenesis. Gluco is the root for carbs. Neo means new. Genesis means creation. So creation of a new carb. What happens is our bodies have been around for thousands of years. If you, you know, probably what, like 4,000 years humans have been around, right? Maybe even more. I, I, I'm not a, a, his, a historian, but at least 4,000 years. Yeah. Why is it that in the past, I don't know, 10 years, people are like, oh, keto is what we need to do. Unfortunately, keto was created for people who had epilepsy or seizures. Mm. Uh, most of the athletes I work with are not having epilepsy or don't have epilepsy or they, or they don't have seizures. They do. Great. I would be more than happy to talk about a ketogenic diet. However, for athletic performance, it is not shown to be king. When it comes to the plant-based diet, there was a movie on Netflix, Game Changers. Uh, pardon my yeah, French, but yeah. it will not give you bigger boners. So, so shout out to all the dudes out there that think that's what's going to help. Unfortunately, that's that not it. This FYI disclaimer, yeah. <laughs> like those were college kids. And when you were in college, your testosterone levels were a lot higher than when you get older. So, and it was only one night and I'm sure because they got good night sleep and they probably weren't drinking that night. That's probably why they had more testosterone production. Sure. With the game changers, if you actually look at the facts, being more plant-based is not going to be better. What it may do because you're eating more carbohydrates, it may be helping you. I'm someone who promotes eating more fruits and vegetables. So if a plant-based diet will get the athlete to eat more fruits and vegetables, great but I'm all about animal-based proteins in their diets because it helps with the muscle building switch you have in your body. So the game changer said improves recovery and all this. The guy just cherry-picked data. He didn't look at the real data, which shows that eating whey-based products versus plant-based products is going to be better for recovery and 100% honesty. And I always tell people, and a lot of the athletes I work with, they came to me after the game change came out, like, I want to go plant-based. I'm like, awesome. We're going to get you to eat more fruits and vegetables. They're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, that's what we have to do. And that means less protein or not less protein. I apologize. Less animal-based protein. So that means no more chicken tenders. And they're like, what? I can't have chicken tenders. No more ham subs from your favorite sub shop. What? What do you mean? So a lot of people need to understand what is plant-based because that the game changers want you to go vegan or vegetarian. But when it comes to being plant-based, that means a majority of your, your plate is filled with plants. So that's more whole grains, more fruits and vegetables and a moderate amount of animal protein, which is what I already promote and teach my athletes. 
But if you want to go vegan or vegetarian, you just have to be very, very, very planned and in tune with your diet because the amount of leucine, which is the amino acid, I, I'm sorry, there's a lot of science, but in order to make a protein, you need 20 amino acids. Out of those 20, leucine is one of the most important ones that turns on a muscle building switch you have in your body. So what happens is in a plant-based, you need almost two and a half cups of, let's say, rice and beans to get the amount of leucine to turn on the muscle building switch. When it's an animal-based product, just your hand. So it is not superior, again, for athletes. What has been shown to always be superior for athletes is whole grains, fruits and vegetables, lean protein, and hydrate or dehydrate, right? That's like the first. And then supplements are all after. Uh, so game changers, great documentary to watch, but don't take it as given, right? Keto, if that's the way you like to eat, go for it. I would only recommend it for someone who has epilepsy. So awesome. all in all, like you have to find the best nutrition plan that works for you. And I think so many people try to jump on the next diet train or the diet wagon instead of actually working with a professional and understanding that there's certain things that will be better for you and not what's better for your neighbor or for your friend. Sure. Yeah, and that's true too. And so like you talked about athletes. Now, would there be anything different that you would suggest for non-athletes? Like say, you know, because yes, yeah, so I'm going to have that word. There, there are athletes watching this right now, but yeah. someone who just like, who has a, just a nine to five job and just is looking to lose weight. And obviously, yes, we, we've already talked about the importance of like how everyone's different, but in general, like if someone wants to lose weight and, and they're listening to this right now, like, what are, your, what are your thoughts on these diets that many people are probably thinking about, you know, partaking in? So one thing as a dietitian, I was told when I was getting my master's was whenever you get on a plane, don't ever tell anyone what you do for, for a living. And I'm like, huh, that's weird. Because every time you get on a plane, you know, people are like, hey, what do you do for work? And when I worked for the Jays, I was traveling 20 days of the month. So I was on a plane every other week, right? Mm -hmm. So... I get on the plane and someone's like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a dietitian. Awesome. What is the best thing I can do to lose weight? Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and when that first question got to me, I was like, now I know why. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I still tell people I'm a dietitian because I want to provide value. All right. So if I could give someone like the biggest tip on what to do, which will help you lose weight, I can tell you, let's see, do I have the picture here? No. Hold on a second. Let's see. It's to follow the lean plate. So if you go to my Instagram, you can DM me, I will send you a picture. Um, or you can send me an email, I don't have it on me right now. But the lean plate is half a plate of fruits and vegetables, a quarter plate of carbohydrates, and a quarter plate of proteins. And the way you measure that if you don't want if your plates are really big, or really small, is one fist of carbs, your fist, not your spouse's fists, not your coach's fist, not someone else's fist, your fist, one fist of carbs, one palm of protein, not counting your fingertips, and two fists of fruits and vegetables if you want to lose weight. I always tell people that, and they're like, no way, it's that easy. And I'm like, I can tell you it's that easy because that's what I went through. And not only what I went through, what I taught hundreds of athletes and active individuals that I've worked with. So even someone that does a nine to five, yeah. I had someone tell me, Doc, when we first started working together, I'm not going to do work on this plan if I can't eat out. And I was like, I mean, you can't eat out. And he's like, well, I eat out every meal. Will this still work for me? And I was like, yeah. Someone I worked with worked a nine to five. They were just training up for a marathon. They, I had them eat lean plates for foods when they ate out. So that means they had to reduce the portions of protein because typically when you go out, they give you a big portion of, of protein. The amount of carbohydrates usually double. So I had them reduce it to one fist. And then the veggies are typically the hardest to find out. So they would either keep veggies at home or they would order something out. I got them to reduce their body composition. So that means they got to lower their body fat, increase their muscle mass. And when I always ask someone to lose weight, I'm like, are you just trying to lose fat and muscle? Or are you trying to lose fat and build muscle? And typically it's the latter, not the former. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so then we don't want big drops in weight because if we do, that means you're losing muscle and fat. I rather you lose fat, gain muscle because that means it's a long-term habit. And I typically don't want anything more than a pound a week because anything more than that, you're typically losing fat and muscle. So the big tip, if someone wants to lose weight, one fist of carbs, one palm of protein, two fists of fruits and vegetables at every meal. So that's every three to four hours for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then in between a snack must contain a carbohydrate and a protein. And the reason we want carbs 
we need that fuel regardless if we're doing a nine to five you still use your brain and your brain uses carbs as energy you still use your muscles when you do a peloton workout right or whatever kind of training you do yeah. and then you need the fruits and vegetables so that they fill you up you need the protein so that you're building the muscle so every component helps fill your plate which will help you be successful and most people think they need to cut out as opposed to what can they add in to make their diet better a lot of good stuff, man. You definitely bring a lot of a lot of heat and fire, man. A lot of value. I try. <laughs> because it's true, you know, I mean, especially today where, you know, I, and we talked, we've mentioned COVID a lot in, in the quarantine, yeah. all the, a lot of different experiences and challenges. And so I'm glad that, you know, you're able to provide a lot of insight. So, um, like, if someone wanted to be Tony or be, you know, their version of Tony and, and, and get into this field. Like what is some, some advice you might give someone who might, might want to be a, a registered dietitian one day? Get ready to grind. Uh, <laughs> if you want to work in sports, what I always tell people, I remember when I went to my first, uh, so CPSDA is the collegiate and professional sports dietitians association. I tell them to join that if they're interested in becoming a sports dietitian. And I went to my first boot camp. So these were for people that were just studying nutrition that wanted to know more about sports nutrition. And I believe who was it? He was working for the University of South Carolina at the time. And he now works for the LA Rams. He's the dietitian for them. And he said, if you want to work as a dietitian, you better be the best damn smoothie maker there is. Because <laughs> what that shows is if you can make a smoothie for an athlete that's compliant and do it day in and day out. So you're being consistent and providing the best you can for the athlete, then they can trust you in counseling. Then they can trust you in other areas, but do the small things right. And then you can do other tasks. And trust me, when I was working at the University of Florida, I was like, I can counsel athletes. I can help in other ways. And I remember what he said, just do the smoothie things right. And guess what? I did the smoothie things right. And eventually I was able to run a, fu a fueling station. So I was a manager of a location to help fuel over 500 athletes at the University of Florida. Wow. From there, I was working with the Toronto Blue Jays where I managed seven locations internationally in Canada and the United States and Dominican Republic. Right. And it all started by making smoothies right. So someone who wants to get started, go to school, become a dietitian, become a registered dietitian, and then find a program that has sports that you can volunteer at. Right. Because that's typically the first step in how you get a taste in sports nutrition. Be the best dang smoothie maker you can. <laughs> and that's the one thing I learned. And I remember when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's just not right. But when you do the small things right, then people can trust you to do the big things right as well. But if you can't do those small things consistently well, like if you show up late, you mess up the smoothies, how are we going to trust you with helping an athlete with his or her diet, right? How are we going to, how is an athlete going to trust you when you can't even stock the shelves, right? And it's just, just the way it is. So just do the small things right and go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, man. Preach, preach. Yeah. My and yeah. that's good advice for anyone, like no matter what field it is, right? Doing the small stuff, the details, right? And I remember having this conversation with one of my mentees, and I was telling her, like, it's those details that matter because at some point, you know, once if you're if you're trying to get a job in, in sports, right? People are gonna have the same degrees, people are gonna have you know similar experiences. It's those yeah. details that matter, making the smoothies, right? Or like in my field, and, and, and in your field, building the rapport, getting to absolutely know, building that trust, right? And getting making them realize like, hey, that you want that you, you have a passion to help them because anyone, but but especially athletes, they'll know they'll know if you're there to help them or not. They'll know if, if you actually care about them, right? And, and, and most people do. Most people have that sense, right? And I know I do for sure. And if I know someone truly wants to help me, I love that stuff. You know, so, um, yeah, I love that. I love that advice you give. So, so when Tony is not being the registered dietitian, Tony, what do you like to do for fun, man? Like, you know, hydrate. I mean, given That's the fact, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hydrate, hydrate. Here you go. That's it. That's it. Uh, no, so I have a nine week old daughter. So, spending time with my uh, it's awesome, man. daughter, Amaya, spending time with my wife. Um, love working out. I do high intensity interval training. Uh, drinking some good bourbon. That's definitely a highlight. So I got to make sure I hydrate so I don't dehydrate <laughs> yeah. and really just trying to enjoy life. Those are the things I am. I enjoy in life just out there and doing the little things, man, because life flies by fast. Um, I can tell you after having my daughter and saying that she's nine weeks old, I don't even, I can't even imagine like, Oh my God, it's already been nine weeks. It feels yeah. like she was born yesterday. And people tell me that's just going to fly by when she turns 18. And 
I really want to enjoy the time I have with my, my mm. family. So that's number one for me when I'm not working and providing the best value I can for my athletes and my active individuals I work with, it's spending time with my family. That's good stuff, man. And especially in, in today's world, like it just, it, it was with so many restrictions going on right now. It's like, you, you got to look at, look at things as far as what can I do, right? Yeah. Like you, you have a beautiful family and, yeah. and you have, you know, your career and you're helping people. And we and both of us are able to help people all over the world because yes, sir. we don't have to be there, right? We don't have to be yeah. in person like some, you know, like some uh, professionals do. So it's, it's, it's a great gift that we have. And so, um, yeah, man. So I definitely appreciate that. So yeah, Tony, my brother, you know, I appreciate you. And thank you. Anyone listening right now, if you want to get a hold of this guy, and I say just you do, if you're ever look, if you're looking to talk to him and have some questions and, and maybe work with them, you know, as far as getting your diet right or whatever it is you might need, you know, shoot him an email at Tony at nutrition fp. That's Frank and Paul. So Tony at nutritionfp.com. You can visit his website, nutritionfp.com. And Please follow him on Instagram, okay? <laughs> a lot of good stuff. I'm telling you, a lot of good stuff. And I mean, it's like you're getting free stuff a lot of times. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this guy is awesome. But <laughs> thanks. I know, I know there's a lot more details involved with the one-on-one training, but follow him on Instagram if you have Instagram at coach underscore Tony Castillo. Again, that's at, Insta- at uh, Instagram at coach underscore Tony Castillo. So, my friend Tony, always a pleasure, my man. You know, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on again, Danny. I appreciate you, Doc, and hydrate or dihydrate. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Imagine this guy's face. So take take a mental picture of his face <laughs> and remind yourself, okay? Hydrate or dihydrate right now, wherever you are, wherever you listen to this damn thing, okay? Go get yourself some water, okay? Right. Go hydrate and think about Tony, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and take care of yourselves because, you know, in today's world, that's all we can do. So I appreciate you all listening in. All right. Take care of each other. And most importantly, take care of yourself. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Danny.